Chamber of Frontier fans, we have been eating so good. I literally was talking about this yesterday. I literally was talking about this yesterday when I did videos for both the finales of Soul Leveling and Mashable. More specifically, how Soul Leveling announced the second season as other shows did, but I compared the two shows doing so in 2023, and we haven't really heard much news about most of those shows yet. Thinking if the turnaround is that good, possibly, just maybe possibly, if we have a chance to get those season twos, it would be in October. But with second season announcements at the end of a first season being so constant, I don't want to say something negative. <laughs> We find it harder to get hype after the redundancy, especially since all these season 2 announcements that be coming over and over and over and over again doesn't exactly have a drop date. And yet here comes Shane with our frontier, and all these considered the way we got Shane with our frontier, you wouldn't even expect it. Shane with our frontier came out of nowhere with C2C, right? Then we look up the episode count and realize we're getting 25 episodes. That's a part 1 with a part 2 for 13, son. Not to mention the two cores overlap the year, like end of 2023, start of 2024. As great as this show has been, as great as I left over this show has been, and one of my favorite shows of 2023, more likely my favorite shows of 2024, they will be the last type of show that I would expect to get a freaking season two in the same year. But here I am waking up this morning, even before I watched the episode season one finale to the news that Shape of the Frontier season two is coming October 5th with another two cores. 25 episodes that take over two years, there's a drop at the end of the same year it just finished with that release date, unlike all these other shows, just to have another two cores taking over the rest of this year and the start of the next again. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I got nothing more to tell you that this is your main man, Master Cell, leader of the Master Knights of the Roundtable of Company One. Subscribe to the Spin Move. And we're here with the season one finale of one of the best shows of 2023, 2024, and 2025, nigga. I don't make the rules. And to be fair, if you want to play slightly a little bit of devil's advocate, honestly, and I, you can kind of say this with the direction I'm going with my past few weeks of my reviews at the tail end of season one. It's probably for the best that I actually did figure out that news of a season two before I went into this episode. First of all, that that announcement was all online. Like, if you weren't following Crunchyroll on Twitter or following the Kadasha channel on YouTube to see the actual trailer, you would not have known that season two was coming out just by watching this episode. Despite the whole thing with the Duohan that we fought, was a very interesting boss fight, very nice. And especially the things with the Crystal Scorpion, honestly, at, the, at its core, was straight comedy. <laughs> this episode was entirely a setup episode for next season. Rendezvousing with Black, who introduces the new character, Aiden Ramis. His name was like Armors or something. Like Aiden Ramis. Not to mention, we met the professor. And doing all this, even though he does have to do, Samaka does have to get into his own thing and do his own thing, yes. But he did all this at the expense of his other two members of Wolf Game because they both sent him pretty much the same email that they want to talk, and he did not. Ladies and gentlemen, in some shape and form, October, we will start season two with a cuss out. <laughs> but that being said, we do indeed get back into the swing of things where they're still foreshadowing the eventual rematch with the Night Slayer. And you know, with the arc they've been on right now, trying to make Black a master blacksmith, and trying to get all this new stuff, all these new materials, and to the point now, where not only are we building weapons, we're building accessories as well. This build up to the Night Slayer fight, I would say it was probably pretty short-sighted of me to thinking that we was going to end this show off with that. And despite Wolf Gang he making a group to making a guild writer to fight unique monsters, maybe I had in the back of my mind, or absolutely in the back of my mind, that Soraku was going to get some help in this rematch. But despite the fact not only when he told <laughs> Castle about how he got to Rappatusa in the first place, but finding the Night Slayer, and what happened with him after he fought the Night Slayer, and <laughs> Okasa was just like, hell no. I guess the reason why I thought we was going after the Night Slayer that quickly because I thought Soraku would have help. But apparently not. This, his rematch with the Night Slayer is indeed more than likely going to just be one on one. And on that note, this man is not ready. And Star Rocket would have done exactly what I wanted him to done a few weeks ago and fight the, the Night Slayer like Kong on again before this season one is over, he would have been destroyed. So first and foremost, before anything else, let's be real, despite what I wanted in the beginning, this is for the best. <laughs> Sorry, I got interrupted and I lost my train of thought. Anyways, we start this episode off with Black. Black. Going over all the Christmas Scorpion parts that Soraku gave her, Soraku telling her that she gave her a full set, stuffing in his mouth for carrot, and staying there in shame. <laughs> He's gonna go back for that snicker. <laughs> At some point, he is. However, apparently, what <laughs> Black was more interested in was the gems that came with these butt parts. Those black gems, even though the scorpion parts can be made into weapons, yes, 
those gems apparently is more better suited for accessories. Which I'm still confused on, because one of those accessories is very like, kind of hard for Soraka to use with the nice little curse on him. And not to jump around, but apparently this curse isn't actually that much of a curse at all. Like when you're actually inflicted with it yourself, you get a whole lot of handicap that has been plaguing Soraku for the entirety of the series. At the same time, the Lakonga mark is apparently something to be very revered. As we've seen in the past, not only can he use that mark to go through these areas with these dark type monsters and they kind of just look at it and be like, oh no, nah, don't touch that guy. The NPCs in the game also very much respect him because of this. And then you add on the fact that he won <laughs> against Weathermon, even though he had help. As top fly as he is amongst his other, uh, other players in the forums and whatnot, he's even more respected by NPCs apparently. However, Rabbituza does not have a jeweler, does not have somebody who can make accessories out of the stuff in their home. So, this is where we have to call for outside help. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we call the Ignoramus. Black was just like, Ignoramus. Is that the clown was outside or something? Like, <laughs> now, when it comes to this character, right? This night cat character, <laughs> freaking nightcrawler. From, from, coming from Casaria, apparently another city like Rabbitusa, with cat people who's very much allied with Rabbitusa, who's also very much well known about Soraku, not only being one of Bash's disciples, but everything else I already explained. Soraku, old famous ass. There's two things about this character, Agnoramus, right? One is obviously, you know, he's the type of character that has a lot of cliches that come with him. And somebody when it comes to Rabbitusa, when we step outside the realm of Ibu and we meet her sisters and we meet people that her sisters are associated with, there's a lot of kind of colorful characters around. Igmanic, if you will. And despite Igmanic obviously bursting with personality and whatnot, his demeanor, character type and whatnot isn't exactly something I'm typically fond of seeing. It's almost like the opposite of people who don't like stoic characters like that because they kind of all do the same thing. This guy is kind of a little too much. His dynamic with Black doesn't exactly help, however, there is a lot of mystery that goes on there because she claims the only relationship that they have is the fact that she made a weapon for him one time and that's all. That's obviously Cap. I don't even have to explain that. We come back to the next, the, the next day to see she, she's apparently stepping on this man, who is enjoying every bit of it. But anyways, <laughs> first and foremost, this guy, again, has heard of Soraku, doesn't believe he's Soraku, who Soraku is who he says he is, and tries to attack him. Soraku is able to dodge the blade, won't say easily dodge the blade, he does attack with a surprise with a bit of sweat coming down him, but being able to dodge that is all the proof that either Ravens ass needed that Soraku was legit. How many people has he killed just with that test? Now, pretty much with the only options on the table was either give these gems to Ignoramus and have him figure it out, or just sell them, which I believe was too short-sighted. Like, you didn't even think about it for real, for real. <laughs> you know the gems were never what Soraku was out there in the first place. He's still just worried about the Crystal Scorpion parts. He gives the gem to this man, and we figure out the rest later. And at this point, Soraku is tired. And by Soraku, we mean Hisutome. So he opts to take a nap before getting back into the game. Guys, honestly, for this being the season one finale, I did expect some IRL action with Hisutome. But really, 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 man really just like, <laughs> woke up. No, he didn't wake up. He got all out of the game, looked at his phone, seen that he had emails from Pope Ocasio and Pencil Gone, and we're just like, I'll answer those when I get up because they want to meet this evening. Goes to sleep. And next thing, he's right back in the game. I get it, you're on summer vacation right now. But you can't actually do nothing but this game, bro. Leave the room or something. Go outside. I know it's just character design at this point, but even Hisutome got himself as the IRL got some kind of built to his character. Like, bro, do you don't like do any outside extracurricular activities? Do you work out or anything? Like, what's going on here? Is that just the effect the game has on people? Even Katso in real life is giving up his responsibilities of a pro gamer just to keep on in this game because he just wants to keep up with Pencil Gun and Soraku. We don't too much see the IRL side of Pencil Gun. We just know that in real life she's a famous a model, but we don't really see her, you know, actually, yeah. And the montage at the end of the season that was explaining the future events, at least Ray, Psycho Zero, was in it. You know what, fuck it. Bringing up Ray just now? It reminds us when it comes to this show, despite we have our IRL moments, they don't really matter, do they? Moving on. For the second time, making a long story short, Shimaku has to once again move through the city, apparently through the eighth town. When you get to the eighth town? What, did, what, did I miss something? I thought we was going to the sixth. I understand there was that fork in the road type thing like we was talking about with Legends of Zelda games where you could either go to this town, this town, or that town. But I thought we was going in no more order because I thought we was mm, smart. Then is Zoraku isn't exactly quote unquote playing the game to play the game, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Zoraku dons the same disguise that he has before. And so it's easy of a turn to Emu in her human form. But his disguise is that big old role pretty much underneath that he has 
a black and ignoramus going at their normal stick at this point. I will say this, despite having a past that pretty much black was cap was capping on, let's be real. Evidently, Ignoramus has a lot of affection towards Black, but she doesn't exactly reciprocate that, so I don't typically see her in the wrong here. To whoever needs to hear this, ladies, if you say no to a man's advances, and for whatever reason in any shape or form he puts his hands on you, you are allowed to choose violence. However, this trip through the ape town is halted because not only is about to stick it out like a sore thumb as normal, but I guess sticking out as a sore thumb is different from being outed as a famous player who beat Redamon. Walking past him is apparently something we cannot escape now. A magical girl. She has zero fan service. I think we're safe, y'all. This girl walks up on Soraku after passing him and gets real close to the bus. <laughs> Having <laughs> Soraku and Emu dead ass nervous. And then right in this point when Soraku tries to ask her what's going on, we get some of this action. This magical girl apparently has a deep ass voice and she tells Soraku that she knows. Recognizing that this has happened before, early on in the show, when we first got pressed up against... Dang. <laughs> Pentagon's Brothers Guild. What was, what was the name of them clowns? <laughs> wow. Wow. Hold on, I, I'm actually trying to remember. Hold on. Bruh. Pentagon's old guild, like, what? Damn, they're relevant ass. What, who are they? <laughs> Anyhow. We come to find this bachelor girl avatar that we're talking to right now is the professor. Yeah, that guy that apparently whose wife had to wake him up at, right immediately after the red bar fight got defeated, but we never actually got to see the professor because he was still asleep. For those who remember that episode. Even as I was talking about earlier with Hisatome his, his logging out of the game, taking a nap, waking up again, right back into it. A reminder that there's no pointless scenes in Single World Frontier. Everything is connected, y'all. It's like the wire. So you experience lane? In long story short, the professor introduced himself to Soraku and because they was uh, l lacking ambition and trying to figure out the rest of this world because they believed they already figured out everything, here comes Soraku after an update happens in the world, defeating Redamon and unlocking a whole gang of other ish. Reinvigorated, the professor is, he offers his hand to Soraku to as in helping him figure out the truth of this world. The truth of the god tier game of Shangri the Frontier. The truth that Sessinger has told him that he needs to reach out. The truth that Bash has told Soraku if he gets these three items that he will help him find out. If I keep it buck 50, I don't really expect Soraku to accept this offer. But at the same time, he, I don't see why he wouldn't. The biggest things that has him still tied to this game, his, his uh, attachment to Rappatusa, this is his being fashion disciple, and what happened with the Battle Mod fight, is all kind of going towards the same conclusion. Now to mission one of his partners sent off to Pistol Guy, who was pretty much playing the game, looking for Ragnarok that Set was talking about, but now a hairpin in her hair reminded her of Set is kinda on the same quest. One of the ways to unlock the most thing in this game, as we see in this beating set of unique monsters, but it's the point of Wolfgang. If Asamaku may have different plans and may want to figure things out more so on his own, I think it would kinda actually be a waste not to change this man's hand. However, we got six months till season two, so no spoilers. But at this time that's it. Unless you add the actual end point before the, the, the credits roll and the mini starts of us seeing again, like Hong on the Night Slayer. At this point, patiently waiting for Soraku to pull up. We're being told that this fight with the, with the Night Slayer is not that far off. Can't be lie. Can't even lie. The hype is real. Nigga, I'm so fucking ready for season two, nigga. <laughs> As the gamer community says, let's go! Honestly, I ain't got nothing conclusive to say. This show is the greatest this entire time. Season two is on the wires, and <laughs> I really don't see no point in acting like this is this is any different than getting an episode coming soon, except the fact that we got wait six months instead of a week. But since we know this, <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, normal master show review end. That was the episode. Loved it. Just keep it moving. See you in six months. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Moon. Mm -hmm. Old deep voice as Soraku. <laughs> I meant to say professor, but they both apply, don't they? I actually did forget to talk about the SLF mini. Why did you take Emu with you when you went back to the Crystal Scorpions?